Okay, same car, different sunglasses. Here you go, Brian. I wore my own sunglasses. <laughs> but, going to get more goats. Let's go. It's not our fault. We've been sent on a mission. And we will complete it. We will complete our mission. I'm not driving today. I threw my back out. I think it has something to do with buying goats. It can't be proven scientifically though. <laughs> We've warned you before, not impulse buying livestock. And yesterday's buy, it was impulse in that we weren't planning on buying a goat for ourselves, but we were planning on caring for two goats for you know the next couple months. So one more goat to the mix. It's, we're ready for it. Everything's ready for it. We got the space for it. We were going to be getting goats. We just decided, as long as we're caring for someone else's goats, why not get one for ourselves? That, well, that's what happens when you go look at baby bottle fed goats. balance because the Nubians have the higher butter fat. Yeah. These are good questions. I should be. You should Caitlin, are you okay with oh. me recording what your answers are? Sure. We'll yeah. get you on because that's a great Where's question. Brendan, I'm, I'm here with Brendan and Caitlin Foley from Hoofprint Cheese Company. Uh, this is a farm in, we're in Millbrook? Yep. Millbrook, New York. What do you guys do? We run the, the goat herd um, and we make cheese from the goat's milk and we also sell the milk. We also make yogurt, um, oh, okay. goat, a goat milk yogurt. Okay. And the cheeses, we have some raw milk aged cheeses and oh, we also nice. have some fresh pasteurized cheese. And oh, my sister perfect. has Locust Hill Market, awesome. which is out there where she sells our products. Well, we're here today, we're actually picking up another goat. We picked up two yesterday, we're picking up a, a third. <laughs> and uh, we want to talk to you a little bit about the goats, the breeds. So this is a Nubian goat here, and you can tell they have the long floppy ears. We have two breeds here at Huffprint. We have Alpines and Nubians. Nubians we like because they have the higher protein and butter fat. They have a little bit of more of a quality milk. Um, and then the Alpines give us a quantity. So we, we get a little bit more milk from them. So we try to do a nice balance for the cheese. We have multiple lines here. We've got goats from New York, from Connecticut, from Pennsylvania. If someone's looking for a Nubian or an Alpine, just goat shopping in general, any good advice for them as to what to look for? Sure. I would ask the farm if they have any milk records, if they keep record on how they produce and um, so you can know kind of what to expect from them. And then as far as health, that's the most important thing. Just make sure that they're lively and they look good and that they come from a clean, clean healthy farm. Do you guys uh, make sure all the animals you're buying are registered? Um, we do, yeah. So all of our, well, except for one. We have one who's unregistered. She's a crossbred. Um, but uh, we do keep a registry of all of our goats. The benefit, yeah, one is, one I would say is uh, making sure you're getting good milk lines. There's someone that's actually going to give you enough milk that you're going to want to be able to drink it. 
Um, and then the other thing is to uh, keep track of their lineage and to know, um, you know, if you want to breed them to get milk, you want to know who would be a good match with that animal and who wouldn't. And who would be inbred and who you want to be, be you know, yeah. keep, keeping track of who actually is related and how related they are. Because a lot of herds end up being quite close. Oh. You bring in, you know, bucks outside to keep the diversity. Yeah. You know, from the other point of view, which is uh, like my more, my more of my mindset, just the business point is like, you know, you want to be able to maintain like the the highest quality. Um, yeah. So keeping track of everybody is is a gives you the ability to do that, and to be able to you know refine your herd based on the quality of the milk, not just the quantity, because a, a goat can produce a lot of milk and it may not be the best, or right. or they may have other issues. Um, so there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of ways to keep track of it, and having it all written down is really nice, and somebody able to track it for us really. Track <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> And the one that we're picking up today, tell us a little bit about the history of this one. Yep, so he is he's from one of the lines that we picked up in Pennsylvania called the Starfire Herd. Um, so his mom and dad came from there, um, and we expect him to be a, a good herd sire. <laughs> Can we take a little walk around and see some of what you guys got set up here? Sure. sure. Take a, sure. We'll go see a few other things, okay. and uh, then we're going to take our uh, our little newbie in here to go. Yeah. Or where is it? Where's the one oh, we're he's taking? Right, here. He's right, right there. There, yeah. there it is. He's almost hiding because he looks uh -huh. a little bit shorter. Yeah, yeah, I must think the, <laughs> the color is he's, very he's close. Very oh, yeah. unique in that uh, we haven't seen. We haven't had any of them that look like yeah. that. That's yeah. such a yeah. Let me. Oh, bud, yeah. don't let him out. <laughs> look at the colors. So Kay spotted right away their hay feeders, and she said, you gotta get a shot of these hay feeders. One of the really big costs is feed, feed cost, so hay cost and things along those lines. And and you know, with goats, they're, they tend to be pretty picky eaters. They like to, to pick and eat what the good stuff is and take a mouthful, have half a bite, and then dump the rest on the ground. Um, so this helps maintain like the hay in the feeder. So they, they pull less of it out, so it makes less of a mess. But I think actually awesome. what's probably most important is uh, the, the uh, parasite control. So oh. goats eating, eating from the ground can pick up parasites, which can make them ill, chronically ill, uh, can decrease production. So it keeps them eating clean, fresh hay all the time. I didn't design this. Uh, <laughs> I actually I found it in a book, and I I am forgetting the author of the book at the moment. But um, they can be found online if you search hay feeders enough. Um, <laughs> but there's a it's a it's really it's a two step deal. The goats have to step up, and then they have to insert their heads through these slots. Um, there's nothing that locks them in place. But what it does is it tends to keep them. Uh, you know, the two step, the step in the head uh, area tends to keep their head in the feeder while they're eating, so they don't take the hay out. Um, so it's uh, it's pretty simple, um, and it's uh, it was a dramatic difference from our prior feeders, which were just regular wireframe feeders. Yeah, this is. I uh, now I see why Kay was excited about this. This is great. Uh, so this is our milking parlor. So this is where we milk the goats twice a day, in the morning and the evening. Uh, they can come through that door right there, that slides open. Oh, great. They walk down here, this is a little area up here. Um, and then they know, they can, put, they can come down to the end, they put their heads in these little feeders, and then their grain is in there. So they have their breakfast or their dinner on the stand here while we milk them. Um, and right now we bucket milk, so we milk into, with a machine into a pail. Um, and bring it over to our bulk tank and uh, pretty soon hopefully for later this season we'll have a pipeline milking system in place and what that means is that the milk will go directly from the goat over to our milk house in through a pipeline. That'll be a little bit less handling of the milk and make work a little bit easier. The basic setup of this came from a dairy in Vermont and uh, they were they weren't going to be milking goats anymore they make uh, goat milk caramels and uh, they decided to just buy in milk and they weren't going to be milking their goats Oh, anymore. wow. So they had their whole stand and set up for sale and uh, they figured, well, that'll fit perfectly where we want to really make our parlor. So we went up there and got it from them and a goat. Came home with a goat too. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened to us yesterday. We went for one, we came home with two. <laughs> <laughs> we, got, we came home with the stand and fuego and um, Brendan made uh, this part to fit where we wanted it here, 
um, but the, the the basic setup came from them and they were Love really it. helpful in helping us get everything going with our milking parlor. You, you might have heard of them, Fat Toad Farm. What is it? A little plug, Fat Toad Farm. Fat Toad, we'll put a link in the yeah. description. We'll let, let people Fat. take them out. They make some really good goat milk yeah, caramels. Goat milk caramel. <laughs> cool. Yeah. You got, we know they're doing this part time, so we can't take up much more time here because you got like tons of work to do. I know. <laughs> weekends but, are weekends are busy. Yeah. <laughs> you but get no, a lot of people all, visit. But part of what we're trying to do here is um, is is be transparent about what we're doing. Yeah. Um, so people can come in. They can see the goats. They can see what we're doing. They can you know they can they can visit the babies. Uh, you know, there's there's folks that are visiting here. They're in the pen with the babies as well yeah, now. Yeah, I love know? it. Um, and they can they can inspect for themselves in essence. They can understand, you know, how we're trying to do things. So yeah. Don't get frightened that they're eating like like poison or something. No, they don't get frightened. They're eating poison. Right. That's right. <laughs> um, what's your thing? It makes the kids feel good too, right? Yeah. 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 To meet the animals that are producing food for you. Mm -hmm. You like right. seeing the babies, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. You getting cold there, honey? No. <laughs> well, we gotta go get our goat. Yeah, nice. the Locust Hill Market over here and we got the Hoofprint Cheese Company in the big barn. They got grass-fed beef, all kinds of different meat, milk products, and of course really good high quality goats if you're looking to get some goats for your homestead. Speaking of the homestead, we got to get our goat back to our homestead. Let's hit the road. Sir, yes sir. Chauffeur? She's driving. I threw my back out and uh, I'm medicated right now, but I'm just taking it easy. Not medicated with it. Not medicated. Uh, it's Tylenol. What were you thinking? original number we planned on, yeah. but goat math, two is three, is four, right? <laughs> I pick on goats all the time. They're not great for a lot of homesteaders, and for this homestead they're not ideal either, but we're not going to be here much longer. At our next homestead, goats will be great for us. My aunt has a herd right over the hill, so our bucks will be there for breeding. We'll get some nice, <laughs> nice does for milk. It's the very first example of how things are gonna change when we move. And we're already starting to plan for Farm 2.0, which will be a reoccurring trend on this channel now. You'll start to hear us talk about Farm 1.0 and Farm 2.0 and the differences. Okay. Took them officially like less than a day to make their first escape. Hi. You're supposed to be in that barn. You're supposed to be in that barn. <laughs> <laughs> 